This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. With former prosecutor and guest Lori Gilbertson. Dennis Rader, BTK, back in the news and back with connections to several cold cases. Carrie Rawson, his daughter, tweeting out just the other day that on the record, they're looking at about five unsolved missing person cases marked possibly attributed to her dad, Dennis Rader. The one that's being looked at very closely as of this moment and looks to be most likely involving Dennis is Cynthia Kinney. She was a 16-year-old cheerleader in Oklahoma who disappeared in 1976, nearly 50 years ago now. But Dennis has archives in some of his writings about Bad Laundry Day and talking about watching a woman across the street at a laundromat and fantasizing about her. There's probably several others that uh, he has not yet admitted to. Where do you think this is going in considering Raider loves attention and he's been very vocal in the last half year or so since Koberger came out. Is this round three of Dennis Raider? Are we going to be learning about far more murders than we ever thought possible? Well, it's so textbook, right? Like he doesn't want another serial killer getting more attention than Mm -hmm. he's getting. Yeah. Yeah. I think what we'll see, you know, is more investigation of these cold cases, uh, which is, in my opinion, fantastic. Yeah. You know, this is why there is no, you know, statute of limitations on murder. There is no time limit by which these cases can be prosecuted, solved and prosecuted. Even if he is doing all these life terms for everything else he's done, there is still, you know, can be some justice out there for these victims. And as a prosecutor and just as a human being, I think that's a really beautiful thing. And they are, it is just chilling to hear in his own words how he was planning, you know, one of these projects, as he called them. And ever since I read about this, bad laundry day has been in my head. And that just is so chilling. So it really is. So it's wonderful that his, you know, certainly that his daughter is cooperating and providing information. It's great that the police departments are continuing to investigate these decades old cases uh, and that there can be some justice and really just some closure on it, whether he gets more time, whether anything is ever tried, at least some unanswered questions can be answered and there can be some sort of accountability and closure. What I would hate to see is kind of what you mentioned, you know, here's this guy who now can be in the news again and he can kind of have some fun with this and get some publicity and reopen all those old wounds. And I really hope that there's some, you know, ways of that kind of coverage where he does not get to have his voice out there again in any other way besides the really confessional way yeah. that they are in these old journals. Well, I know and that is what I hope they they are they're They've thrown out immunity out there to him. Like, just admit it if you did this. Right. And, and he's denying it. He's sitting there saying, no, mm-hmm. I did not do this. Despite the creepiness and it, it, the beginning of games, I would say, Uh, of what he was playing with Sheriff Eddie Virden, who visited him before Eddie even got into talking about why he was visiting Dennis Rader. Rader opened up about his fantasy of a laundromat and a girl and waiting till she was gone and he'd go in with a ruse and get her in his vehicle and then have his way and kill her. And then he found out that they were looking into him for that exact same crime. Uh, that doesn't seem to be, I mean, that, that seems to be far too much of a coincidence and a game that Dennis is playing than it is just by chance that he happens to have this fantasy and that's what they're looking into based on his writings. It, it really does make you wonder, even if he did do this, and yes, he has admitted to the past of other ones, does he want to admit to this? Or is, you know, he's 78 years old, he's starting to get into frailer conditions his mind apparently pretty good but his body starting to not be in the greatest shape is is this something he's going to ride out into a courtroom and have that experience because round one he was he admitted guilt to all of them this time around doesn't necessarily have to and it would certainly get him a lot of attention and get him out of that cell yeah wouldn't it and here we are talking about him exactly i know he here he is back in the news so yeah i mean you know we talk somewhat 
this whole time about just what is in the minds of people like Koberger or Huerman or Frader here. And it's tough to tell, but there are some things that are pretty universal. And one of them is this kind of attention seeking. And if this, like you said, if this is going to maybe get him some attention when things might be a little boring, serving all those life terms, and he can get a visit from a sheriff where he gets to recount these fantasies, yeah. where he can maybe get some time in a court and get to hear about all of this, you know, that might be kind of, of interesting and a bit of a change of pace for the 78 year old. Yeah. So it it could be all games. It really could be just because he admitted all these things before doesn't necessarily mean he wants to now. And I think we're going to have to just wait and see, you know, with all of these five cases, especially the one in the laundromat, as you've mentioned, what kind of evidence comes out and what kind what other kind of ties there are from maybe anything forensically, any other witnesses, possibly all of kind of the confessional writings. And we'll see where the investigation goes with it. You're consuming the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.